Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 65. We are on page number 263, day 3065, 3003 is to indicate that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 65, we are dealing with parabolas and we are working on problem number 19. Problem number 19, as you see in the book, and I hope, I hope that you have the book in front of you. Problem number 19, as you see in the book, there is only one parabola, there is, a, there is only one problem. We call that, we label that one as part A. That was day before yesterday. Yesterday we did part B, which was a different parabola. Today we're going to do part C, the third parabola, and then there'll be one more tomorrow, part D. Do you understand? And the problem that we'll do today, dealing with the parabola, that problem I gave it to you yesterday. In, in, in last video, I gave you the problem, which is still on the blackboard here, and I asked you to work on it. Here we have a parabola, and we are told that it goes through these three points. Let's give these three points name. Let's call, the, let's call these points point A, point B, and point C. We are told that it goes through these three points and we are asked to describe this parabola. Ask, describe as in, tell us a little bit about this parabola. Where does it cut the x-axis? Where does it cut the y-axis? Where? What is this line of symmetry? What are the coordinates of its vertex? How does it sit? Can you plot it? All of those good things. And why three points? Why do they give us three points and expect us to be able to do all that? Well, it's very straightforward. When we're dealing with a straight line, when we're dealing with a straight line, if, if in, the, in the coordinate system here, if you have a straight line, how many how many points do you know, need to know in order to locate that straight line, in order to come up with the equation for this line, how many points do we need to know? We just need to know two points that it goes through, any two points. As long as you tell me that it goes through any of the two points to this line, we can figure out what the equation of the line is. And the question is why? Well, the answer is very straightforward. Equation of a line in the standard form, in the, in the slope-intercept form, looks something like this mx mx plus b listen carefully okay mx mx plus b what are the two unknowns here the two unknowns here are the slope and the y-intercept since there are two unknowns we need two points two equations uh, two, two points that it goes through what are the unknowns here when we write the equation of a parabola in a standard form the equation of a parabola in a standard form looks something like this. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form of the parabola, where a, b, and c are the coefficient, are the three coefficients. There are three unknowns. Those are the three unknowns there. The three unknowns there are the coefficient a, b, a, b, and c. By the way, do not confuse these a, b, and c, the coefficient with this, these three points here, they have nothing to do with each other. These are just the name I gave to the three points. And, and if you like, to avoid confusion, they don't have to be a, b, and c. We can call these three points anything that you like. We could have called these points p, q, and r if you like. Let's get going, shall we? Since we, since we have three unknowns and we know the three points that this parabola goes through, we should be able to come up with three independent equations. And once we have the three independent equations, we should be able to solve for the three unknowns. It's going to be a system of simultaneous equation, three equations, not two, system of equation that is, three equations, three unknowns. Let's get going. Let's start with point P. If we deal with point P, if you're dealing with point P, point P we know goes through one, two, in other words, x is equal to one, when y is equal to two, or the other way around. So, when y is equal to two, x has to equal one. 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. There you go. Once we simplify it, 1 squared is just 1. So it says 2 is equal to a plus b plus c. That's our equation 1. Equation 1. Let's work on the second equation. Again, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's use point q. If you use point Q, pay attention. It's important that we pay attention. 
when y is equal to negative 1, when, is y, when does y equal negative 1? y equals negative 1 when x is 4. So wherever we see y, we're going to replace with negative 1. And wherever we see x, we're going to replace with 4. So let's do that. So negative 1 for y, a 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c. It's just a matter of paying attention and concentrating so that we don't muck it up. Do you understand? Muck it up with the letter M, not an F. Do you understand? Don't get excited. M is in Mary. So negative 1 equals 4 squared is 16, so we're going to get 16A plus 4B plus C. That's our second equation. We need, we need three independent equations. Let's work on the third one with point R. If you use point R, we're going to get the third equation. Y is equal to AX squared plus BX plus C. Let's, let's keep on going. When, y, when X is equal to 2, Y has to be 3. So replace whatever you see X, we replace with 2, and Y has to be 3 at that point. So A times 2 squared plus B times 2 plus C, it gives us 4A plus 2B plus C. This is our equation number 3. Let's put these three equations here so that we can work on them. Equation 1 was right here. 2 equals a plus b plus c, that's our equation 1. Equation 2, we arrived here. Equation 2, we arrived here, which tells us negative 1 equals 16a. I'm going to rewrite this a, b, and c because I left no room to write the coefficients. That was stupid of me. a plus b plus c. So 16a plus 4b plus, plus 4b, 16a plus 4b plus c. And equation 3 is right here, which gives us 3 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus 3. Those are the three equations. Now we can erase all this thing because we need the room. We have gotten three equations. Now we have to work on those three equations to find the parabola. And it's just a matter of it's just a matter of putting in the labor because that's all it is now. From this point on it just requires uh, brute labor, brute force that is, to just work on this three simultaneous equation to find the value of a, b, and c. So, this equation one, let's put equation one here. Let's erase this thing here so we can have more room. Equation one tells us that 2 is equal to a plus b plus c. Equation two tells us negative one is equal to 16a plus 4b Let's see. Where are we going with it? Well, where we are going with it is that is the fact that we recognize that the C's have the same coefficient in all three, which means it will be very easy to eliminate C first because they have the same coefficient. So let's do that. So what we can do now, what we're doing right now is we're subtracting, listen carefully, we're subtracting second equation from the first equation. We're subtracting, because I put the second equation at the bottom, you see? We're subtracting second equation from first equation. And whenever you're subtracting one equation from the other equation, then the equation that is being subtracted, make sure the very first thing that you do, make sure that you go and change the sign of each of the coefficients right away, immediately. This is a plus. The plus is going to become negative. That's the positive. It's going to become negative. This positive is going to become negative. And that is what allows us to cancel out the C, because now we have a positive C and a negative C. It goes away. But make sure you do the entire equation in one shot. And now, Oh, but you see, I did not do that myself. Blasted, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe that I almost messed it up big time. Blasted. That's a negative. I should have changed that to that side also. It's very easy to make a mistake. Very simple to make a mistake. Do you understand? Just pay attention. Because once you make a tiny mistake, then everything you do, obviously, is going to be all wrong. Not only that, but at the very end, it will be a hell to try to figure out where the mistake occurred. Because you have to go back and retrace all your steps. So let's do that here. So that negative became positive. 2 plus 1 is 3. Positive 1 
and a negative 16 is going to give us negative 15a. Let me change the colors, it's easier to read a different color. And positive 1, positive 1 and a negative 4 is going to give us negative 3. We see a 3 here, we see a 15 here, we see a 3 here. They all have a factor of 3 common. Let's divide the entire equation by 3. We divide the entire equation by 3, we get 1 is equal to negative 5a minus b. And let's call this equation equation 4. You must label your equation, otherwise it gets very confusing. That's equation 4. Similarly, now we're going to work on equation 1 and equation 3, or equation 2 and equation 3, doesn't matter, uh, to get rid of c one more time and arrive at a new equation. So I'm going to work on 1 and 3. First we did 1 and 2, first we did 1 and 2, let's go systematically, now we go to 1 and 3. So equation 1 is right here, 2 we are told is equal to a plus b plus c, that's the equation 1. Equation 3 is right there, which tells us the 3 is equal to 4a plus 2b. You see how I left it open so that the coefficient, there's room to write the coefficient? The variables have to line up, coefficient has to line up, it looks nicer. It looks nicer and you're less likely to make mistake if you keep your work clean. Again, this time I'm not going to forget, this time I'm going to start with the entire equation from left hand side. This is a positive 3. Since we, have, since we Now we're going to subtract third equation from the first equation. One more time. We are about to subtract the third equation from the first equation. Since we are about to subtract it, the very first thing we should do is change the sign of each of the coefficients. Everything, the entire equation. So this positive 3 is going to become negative 3. This positive 4 is going to become negative 4. I'm going to put equal sign here. This positive 4 is going to become negative 4. This is a positive 1. This positive 2 is going to become negative, negative 2. And this right here. Again, this negative C and this positive C allows us to get rid of it. Again, pay very close attention. 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1. 2 minus 3 is going to give us negative 1. And here we have positive 1 and a negative 4 is going to give us negative 3a. And positive 1 and negative b, negative 2 is going to give us negative b. I see negative, negative, negative everywhere. Let's multiply the entire equation by negative 1. If you multiply the entire equation by negative, all the negatives are going to disappear. 1 equals 3a plus 4b. And let's call this equation 5. Are you still with me? Now we're going to use equation 4 and equation 5 to get rid of b. You see positive b and a negative p? Let's put equation 4 right underneath here. Let's put equation 4 right underneath here from here. Equation 4. 1 is equal to negative 5a and a negative b. They're almost there. What we notice immediately is that we have a positive b and negative b. They're going to cancel out. Positive 3 and a negative 5 is going to give us negative 2a. And a, and a positive 1 and a positive 1 is going to give us 2, which implies that a must be negative 1. a must be negative 1. Let's put it up here. This implies that a is equal to negative 1. There we go. We have the value of a. Once we have the value of a, so we can put that value of a either in equation 4, which is which has a and b, or equation 5, doesn't matter, and figure out the value of b. Let's use equation 4. Equation 4 tells us, equation 4, which is right here, it tells us that 1 has to equal, equation 4 right here, 1 has to equal negative 5a, negative 5a, but we just found out a to be negative 1. So that's your negative 5a minus b. Negative plus neg negative times negative is positive, so it's going to become 1 equals 5 minus b. Bring, bring 5 to the other side, subtract 5 from both sides, you're going to get negative 4 equals negative b. Multiply the entire equation by negative 1, and b equals 4. b equals 4. There we go, we found the a, we found the b. a is negative 1, b is positive 4. Now we can find out the C, and we can find out the C 
from any of these three equations here. We have three equations here, we can put them anywhere. The first equation one would be the easiest one to use because all the coefficients are one. So let's put the value of a and b in equation one and find out the remaining unknown, which is the c. Let's do it up here. Equation 1 tells us A plus B plus C equals 2. Well, A we know is negative 1. B we know is 4. Negative 1 and positive 4 is 3. 3 plus C equals 2. Let's subtract 3 from both sides and that is going to give us C is equal to negative 1. C is equal to negative 1. There we go. We have our parabola. Hallelujah. We have our parabola. Let's put it up here. Our parabola looks something like this. y is equal to a squared a squared plus bx plus c a is negative 1. So it's negative x squared b is positive 4 positive 4x and c is negative 1. That's our y. No. Here is, here is what we need to do next. We are not done yet. We still have to cook it some more. That doesn't tell us much at all, much at all or anything at all. We have to cook it more. So, very first thing we have to do here is to make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1. We are going to use the process called completing the square. Completing the square. And completing the square requires that the coefficient of x squared is positive 1. It's not. It's negative 1. So let's multiply the entire equation. Let's, well, let's, let's not multiply it. Let's, let's take out, because if, you, if I were to say, let's multiply the entire equation by negative to get rid of this negative, but then y, y will end up being negative. We can't have that. Let's take out negative as a common factor. So it becomes positive x squared minus 4x plus 1. Are you with me? Now we're going to complete the square. We need the room, so we can erase all of this thing. We don't overlead the equations. Okay, stay with me in the story, okay? We're almost getting there. We're going to need two, two parentheses. x squared is right here. Minus 2 times x. We're going to complete the square. 2 times x. 2 times x. 2 times x times what? 2 times x times what is going to give us negative 4x. Because that's what we need here. 2 times x times 2. Because we already have a negative in front. Negative 2 times x times 2 is going to give us negative 4. Plus 2 squared. That's the complete square. That's the complete square. But let's not leave it there. Let's continue in the parenthesis because if you if you were to put the parenthesis here, then you're gonna to have to keep track of what we added and what we subtracted. Let's not make a complication here. Let's continue here. So let's put this in this parenthesis. And we're gonna continue. So now, what did we add just now? We added 2 squared, didn't we? We added 2 squared, we must subtract the 2 squares to undo it. And also, mustn't, mustn't forget the fact that we also have a plus 1 here. That's what it looks like. Okay, stay with me, that's it. There is a negative here. And this entire quantity that you see, this, pr this parenthesis, let me put it in a different color. This parenthesis this entire quantity is a perfect square. It's a perfect square because it is simply x minus 2 whole squared. And now we have to take care of that part, which is negative 4 and positive 1 is going to be negative 3. Now we can open the parenthesis. We don't need this either, we need the room. And when we open the parenthesis, what we get is this. Voila. What does it tell us? What does this tell us? It tells us, first of all, this negative tells us, this negative tells us that the parabola, the parabola that we're dealing with, parabola that we're dealing with is inverted. It's upside down, that's the negative tells us. This negative 2 tells us that it is shifted two units 
to the right or to the left? Negative 2 tells us they shifted to the right. And positive 3 tells us, this positive 3 tells us that it shifted 3 units up. 1, 3 units up, 2 units to the right, upside down. That's the vertex. So the vertex is positive 2 and a negative 3. Positive 2 and a negative 3. If you like, we can plot it here. positive 2 and positive 2 and a positive 3 rather and it's upside down positive 3 this here what are the roots of this equation what are, where does it cut we never found the roots let's do the roots here where does it cut the x x intercept where does it cut the x axis we never found it the x intercepts are the roots let's continue with this thing so we're going to equate the where it cuts where it cuts the x-axis is where y is equal to zero. So we're going to equate to zero and solve for it. So let's, let's pick up. So zero is equal to negative x minus two whole squared plus three. This is going to be nasty, I'm telling you right now. Subtract three from both sides, we're going to get negative three equals negative x minus two whole squared. Multiply both sides by negative one, we're going to end up with x minus two whole squared equals three. Let's take the square root of both sides and you can end up with x minus 2 equals x minus 2 equals positive or negative square root of 3 and square root of 3 is approximately 1.7 How do we know that it's approximately 1.7? Well the answer is very straightforward and the, and the answer is I'm not going to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again like a parrot I take it for granted that, you, that you're watching these videos in the proper sequence. We already explained it in the previous video, I, two or three days ago, we went in a lot of detail as to why it is approximately 1.7. Watch the previous video somewhere. And if you don't want to watch, look for the previous videos, here is another video, you can look for it. Just type in T's, T's math, day two. Don't worry about what T's is, T-E-A-S. T's as in plural of tea that you drink. T E A S T's is another exam that I help people prepare for. They, 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 they get hold of me because they want to hire me as a private tutor. And that's what I do for a living. I tutor privately one to one on Skype, online, one to one every day, all day. And one of the exams that I do is called T's. T E A S Test of Essential Academic Skills. Just search for T's Math Day 2. Watch the video and learn. How do we learn as to how we know that square root of 3 is approximately 1.7? You will learn it there. So there it is. So x equals to, let's since I left no room there, we're going to continue, we're going to have to continue this up here. So that tells us that x equals to positive or negative, or I should say equal to, now it's approximately equal to positive because we are using 1.7 and 1.7 is not the exact value of root 3. You understand? So it's 1.7 plus 2. Or if you want to put the exact value, the exact value would be written like this. X is exactly equal to square root of 3, positive or negative square root of 3, plus 2. This is the exact value of X. Do you understand? So that's the vertex. Very quickly, because it's getting to be a very long video. When it's positive, I'm not going to do it all out, I'm just going to speak, okay? When it's positive root 3, that's positive 1.7, positive 1.7 and 2 is going to be 3.7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, somewhere here, 3.7 approximately, approximately 3.7. And the other one, when it's negative root 3, negative root 3 is again negative 1.7, negative 1.7 and positive 2 is going to be positive 0.3. Somewhere here, positive, or rather negative 0.3. Those are the two solutions. Where does it cut the x-axis? Well, it's very straightforward, okay? Where does it cut the x-axis? Where can we do it? We can, we can squeeze it right here. We can squeeze it right here. The equation is y is equal to x minus y is equal to negative negative x minus 2 whole squared plus 3. 
Where does it cut the x-axis? Well, it cuts the x-axis where x is equal to 0, or rather y-axis. Where does it cut the y-axis? It cuts the y-axis when x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, we get negative 2 squared. Negative, negative 2 squared is 4, positive 4, but we have a negative in front of it. So we end up with a negative 4 and a positive 3, negative 1. There we go. Negative 1. Should be should have been positive one. Where did I make a mistake? Y is equal to. Oh, not at this stage. We're almost done. Y is equal to negative x minus two. When x is equal to zero, we get negative two squared, which is four. Negative four positive 3, it should be negative 1. But obviously it does not cut at negative 1 because we can see from the picture that it's upside down. The parabola looks something like this. This is what it looks like and you can clearly see that it cuts it, cuts it here. So somewhere I made a mistake and I, I'm not going to actually stand here and just uh, stare at the blackboard. You look for it, find out where I made the mistake, and if I find it, I'll tell you next time, tomorrow. But somewhere, this is not right. I don't know why something has gone drastically wrong. Something has gone drastically wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just leave it here. We'll do the same problem, well not the same problem, very similar problem tomorrow where we'll be given three points and we'll be asked to describe a parabola. And the three points that the tomorrow's parabola is going to go through, I'm just going to put them on the blackboard, work on it yourself. We are told that we have a parabola that goes through 3, 3, 6, 12, and 9, 27. 9, 27. 3, 3, 6, 12, 9, 27. Describe this parabola. Work on it. See what you can do. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Hopefully, you will find out what went what went what went wrong here. Bye now. Bye now.